Hey everyone, welcome to another episode. Do you know what this is? I'm gonna tell you in a second. All right, we're still at the problem of making the train stop very precisely and I got some suggestions from you guys. Thank you for that. One suggestion was putting the sensor not at the side of the track, but in the track itself looking upward to detect the bottom of the train. Well, I did that and it turns out that the sensor didn't read either the gaps between the wagons. So basically it has the same problem as it had when it was on the side of the track. So unfortunately that's not going to work. So another suggestion was using a curve before the train enters into the terminal. And by doing so you can actually place the sensor in the outside of the curve measuring the back of the train. And if you do it like that, you don't need an extendable arm, which rules out a few mechanical play problems. So I tried that, but unfortunately, again, different results. And not good enough, unfortunately. So in the end, now there's only one idea left that we're gonna check out. And that idea has to do with this little fellow here. So, I never stopped thinking about my projects. So I was last week, I was on holiday in Germany. And I was sitting in my vacation home and I was like, the IR sensor thing, it just doesn't, doesn't cut it. It isn't precise enough for some reason. Um, is there another way to make the train stop not using IR or already tried ultrasonic sensors? And then I thought like, yes, there is. Because a year ago I did this high Alpine Lego train video, uh, which was a Lego train set up high into the mountains, which is actually quite cool. If you haven't seen it, link is down below. Um, and then I had a problem as well. I needed to make the train stop automatically because um, I wanted to go from one end to the other end of the track. Uh, but I needed both hands to control the drone. And I thought like, okay, high up in the mountains, snow, a lot of sunlight. That means it's too bright. The light is too bright to use IR sensors. That's the reason why your PF transmitter and receiver of your PF trains don't work very well outside because the receiver is actually blinded by the sunlight. So for that video I needed to figure something out and I came up with the idea of a reed switch. And that is what this little guy here is. This is a reed switch. And a reed switch is nothing else but a switch that switches on when it's close to a magnetic field and switches off again when there's no magnetic field. Very simple but very powerful as well. Um, so I was thinking like I can use that to make the train stop. Oh wait, I can show you. Let's have a look. So let's have a look. Oh, look at all the mess in here. Because I still have that train. I, I haven't had time to fix it or to actually remove the control system. Oops, it's still in there. And if you have a look at the bottom of the train, let me put it in the light. There you see sitting the magnetic sensor. This is the reed switch that I used on the uh, help on high alpine Lego train. And inside you see there's still the uh, control system that made the train stop. So that's the whole idea. Um, but I'm gonna use it the other way around. Like what, what you saw there was that the switchers are actually on the train and the magnets were on the track. Uh, but now it's the other way around. The magnet will be on the train on the last wagon and the switch will be beneath the track. So I'm making a quick and dirty fix. So I'm not going to isolate the open metal parts. If it turns out that this proof of concept actually works pretty well, then I'm gonna make it nice and isolate the whole thing. This is just a quick and dirty fix. See if it works or not. Alright, that's it. Let's hook it up. So I made a mistake. I thought that the read switch would be positioned here, but it isn't since the train is stopping there. I need to position it here, but I made the wires too short. Crap. So <laughs> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position it here since it's just proof of concept and 
the train will stop here, but that's no problem. We can measure if we can stop the train within a one stop or not. And that's the whole idea behind this project. All right, let's uh, write some software. So next step is putting this magnet under the wagon here. I've made a test track that you see here. Also in the real situation there is uh, titles in the middle and I want to make sure that the magnet goes on top of that. You know? So let's put it under like that. Well, this does not work as you can see. It's too low, so I need to redesign the wagon to make sure it'll fit under it. That's a work just fine. So while doing some I.O. testing, it turned out that I had a defect read switch. <laughs> So um, it cost me some time to find a problem. I didn't expect that. So I replaced it with another one. And what I've done also is I've placed the read switch in the lengthwise position like that. Because it turned out that it picks up the magnetic field from the magnet way better when it's positioned like that. So I didn't want to resolder the whole thing. So I just put it in between two uh, segments. So <laughs> speaking of a uh, quick and dirty fix, well... Here you go. So the uh, Arduino is set. I'm gonna connect the train, so like that. The magnet is on the back of the train, and if everything goes well, then the back of the train should stop around where this MERS container is right now. So I'm gonna press the reset button on the Arduino, and let's see what happens. Oh, well that's not good. Um, it stopped way too early. Let me think. The program starts the train by powering up. That's the beep that you heard. Then um, it should wait until the read switch is activated. Ah, oh, I see. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Here's the read switch. Here's are the, the here are the magnets that connect the train. What it actually does, it, it's picking up the signal from the magnets. And that's the whole problem now. So I need to bury it a bit deeper. So I need to put it below the track. And I hope that the magnet under the wagon is strong enough to get the signal over there. Let's have a look. This works. It stopped at the position that I wanted. So now the program works. I'm gonna shovel a uh, base blade beneath it. And I'm gonna have a look at what the uh, results are. Well, this looks promising. And also the last one stopped exactly where it needed to be stopped. Holy sh! <laughs> I think we have a winner. I didn't expect that. Okay, this is a good thing. Now let's test it with another train. See what that gives for results. If you've seen the uh, previous episode, you've probably seen that the red locomotive that I used had some problems with the motor that was a bit worn out. I didn't get actually that far. So I'm not trying another motor. Um, I don't want to change the motor from the uh, locomotive so I'll just put in another lo locomotive and see how this works. So I left the green brick because that was the position where the uh, previous train stopped five times in a row. Uh, let's see what this train does.
That doesn't look promising at all. I thought we had a winner, but it turns out... That is not the case. And it has to do is that this train is running faster than the previous one, so this motor is actually stronger than the Mars motor, which is on his turn stronger than the other one. So <laughs> I thought we had a winner, but we don't. We don't. So the difference between the Lego motors is too big. I already saw that in the previous episode and now I'm really for sure. There's no way I'm gonna stop a train very precisely in this manner. So the only possibility left now is actually um, backing up a train against something slowly. I can use a distance sensor for that and make it look, you know, very agile and stuff like that. But if it, in the end it needs to hit something, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm very sorry about that. I, I, I would have liked to see it otherwise, but the difference between the LEGO train motors is just too great. And I can't work with that. That's it. So the conclusion of this video is actually that the difference between the LEGO train motors is too great. I've tested three different motors on three different locomotives and I got three different results. And I can't work with that. So I need to find another solution to make the train stop at the exact right position. And unfortunately there's one possibility left and that's actually backing up the train to a fixed point. You know, this is the, the last wagon, this is the fixed point. It stops like that, it hits the wall or, or you know, uh, I don't know, I have to see. And I can place a sensor here, this sensor, so it can move backwards very slowly, very gently and then touch it and then it's okay. So that's what I'm gonna do. Then I have a fixed point and unfortunately I can't do it in another way. Thank you for watching. So I hope you like the new format that I'm using. The, um, I was watching the previous episode and I thought like, oh, this is boring. You know, still image all the time. So I tried to make it a bit less boring and a bit more exciting to watch. So please let me know what you think of it. And if you have any suggestions on that, please let me know as well. Um, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't done so. Have a look at my main channel as well. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.